Now, as we have all seen, Japan can be a weird country that likes to design some of the strangest products ever that make me doubt life itself. I think you get what I mean. However, our beloved video game company Nintendo is also Japanese. And you know what that means. Weird and unexplainable patterns for products they once wanted to make, but in the end scrapped for quite obvious reasons. I mean, some of them are straight up useless or very likely to have flopped as soon as they launched them. And today we will have a look at five of the craziest I could find, and some of these are really bonkers. Now, let's dive in. Number 5 Now personally, I'm a big fan of the GameCube, even though it was a major failure for Nintendo because it sold terribly. In the end, they only slinged a total of 22 million consoles over the counter, which was even less than their previous console. However, Nintendo didn't really expect this to happen, and so this console was set up for more than what we saw in the end. And all of this can actually be seen right underneath the console, and if you have a GameCube yourself, you can still see this. Underneath it, there are small covers that you can take off to install peripherals into the main body of the console. A bit like the N64 disk drive that Nintendo made for their previous console in order to sort of upgrade the hardware. And the cool thing is, they are all effectively hidden inside and don't increase the system's footprint. In the end, only a handful of games employed these extras like the dial-up and broadband adapters which went into the larger space and the Game Boy player slotted into the high-speed port. In the end, it just wasn't a banging hit, and so this concept wasn't really further developed, ending up in the bin. Later models of the console even removed some of these ports entirely, and the disappointing sales numbers meant we didn't see any more add-ons. Now, if the GameCube was an enormous success, we could have seen all kinds of wacky things. That would have turned the whole machine more into a PC than an actual video game console. Want this specific feature, more power, or anything else? Sure, just add this to it and you can totally do it. To be honest, the potential would have been endless. Almost anything can be added to the console, since it's modular for the most part. This could have been really cool, but it never happened, sadly enough. It's still quite crazy to think about it, though. Number 4 now, while the GameCube wasn't a huge success and therefore didn't get all its features, the same happened with the Wii, even though it sold heaps. Because when it comes to this motion-controlled doomsday device, there was also a plan for a strange little robot. It was kind of similar to Rob from the good old NES days, looking like a rebirth of that ancient weird robot to be honest. Now this Rob, or robotic operating buddy, was built primarily in response to the North American video game crash back in the year 1983. They planned to convince retailers that the NES, which they wanted to market in the United States, wasn't a video game system but was rather a toy. The the reason why they did this is because the developers were messing around a bit and disappointed the consumers with terrible games. A bit like EA is doing nowadays. And so this toy was made in order to help it sell. But apparently it was going to return during the Wii era. Now this specific patent mentions certain servo motors inside of it and it all looks way more complex than anything Nintendo was thinking of back in the NES era. Which could have been a problem during development, although we can't be sure about this. Now, while it does look quite cool, I have no idea at all what its purpose would have been. We don't even know if it was tied to a specific game or even multiple titles. And when thinking about it, this thing could have been quite an expensive toy. It looks more elaborate than almost any of the other things you could buy for this console like the balance board for example. Personally, I think it would have sold terribly. I don't have anything against Rob whatsoever, but stuff like this doesn't work as well anymore. The only thing like it that still sells is Amiibos, and those are most likely a lot cheaper than this thing would ever be. So sadly enough, it was cancelled, and we never got the chance to spend way too much money on it. Number 3 now the year 2007 was really odd because the robot I just mentioned wasn't the only thing Nintendo was working on. Because they were also making some strange apps for their handheld console, the DS, in order to make it a part of everyday life. Because while playing games, exercising and training your brain was all part of your life now thanks to Nintendo, they wanted to take it a step further using their really unique consoles at the time. And one thing they were working on was a supermarket assistant app for the DS, which was going to be a major challenge if they actually went through with this. 
because it's all way more complicated than you would ever think. This app would have told you where to find specific groceries by interacting with the store's wireless network using an RFID system. As you can imagine, this would have been really hard to set up and would require a lot of cooperation with these companies as well. But it wasn't a bad idea to be honest. Lots of supermarkets have in-store apps and cashierless systems nowadays. Even in the Netherlands where I live, we see small hand scanners for self-checkouts everywhere and more and more are popping up. And this is something a DS couldn't even do. So that already shows that while it would have been cool, it would have never worked in the end. Nowadays, having it on a Switch, for example, wouldn't necessarily be handy, since it's way easier if it's set up by the stores themselves. But hey, at least Nintendo is ahead of the curve and tried to be part of your life again, a bit like Amazon or Apple nowadays. Number 2 now, while Nintendo has worked a lot on making interesting devices and software, they also made some cool mechanics they put patents on. One of these is actually seen in other franchises that aren't from Nintendo, and what I'm talking about is the Sanity System. Now, thanks to the use of the mechanic in the game Eternal Darkness and nothing else, they ended up patenting it. Now, when you hear its name, you can already understand what its basic function is, a character's sanity level. However, there's more to it actually, because weirdly enough, it starts messing with the player by breaking the fourth wall. An example of this is a message that your save file is being deleted, which is pretty messed up and weird when you think about it. If you would see something like that in a game nowadays, then most players would be incredibly confused or even angry. We haven't really seen it in any games aside of the one that I mentioned, but the patent images do show something interesting. Link encountering a bubble. This picture is labeled as a gruesome situation and all of this makes me think that the whole mechanic might have been meant for the Zelda franchise. But in all these years, we've never seen it pop up anywhere. But who knows if it will, since the patent hasn't expired yet. Nintendo could just take this whole idea and implement it into a game like, uh, hmm, I don't know, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Maybe one day we will get a weird visual meter for our sanity as Link runs away from a bunch of gigantic spiders or something. Can you even imagine how that would have worked out in the Forest Temple from Twilight Princess? Because I know a lot of people were sweating like crazy as soon as these demons came falling from above. Number 1 now we get to the creme de la creme, peak Japanese weirdness that was actually ahead of a huge modern day trend. Because today gamers, we will finally learn about what was most likely the very first gaming phone ever designed. And they did all of this before they ever even made a mobile game or a hybrid console like the Nintendo Switch. Before it was even cool, Nintendo was filing multiple patents over the years for emulators and devices that actually look like phones. So this at least shows us that they have been considering to make something like this but never really did, and in the end, normal phones were capable of playing games themselves, making the whole idea kind of useless. Apparently, this idea was also on Nintendo's mind for quite a while, because it was shared on Reddit in 2001. It was some sort of Nokia by the looks of it, with a D-pad as well as an A and B button. It basically allowed you to play 2D games like a Game Boy, while still having all the other features a phone had during that time. And a similar idea to this was yet again seen in the year 2004, but yet again it was just an idea and never got anywhere. So seeing all of this is quite interesting. Nintendo could have made an amazing phone that would have made my childhood so much better. But in the end, we never got it and I kind of understand why. Because technology was moving fast. In no time, phones developed really fast, becoming a great platform for video games. Sure, not as complicated as console games, but still getting better. Making the whole phone console idea a bit useless and probably quite hard to pull off since they're not used to making phones at all. Besides that, it could also hurt the sales of their Game Boy console at the time, making the whole plan even more iffy. Also, little side note, be sure to check out the videos and playlists in the upper right corner because there are way more top 5 and top 10 videos, as well as subscribe. 
Now let's continue. But in the end, we did get a success in this department with hits like Pokemon Go and even Mario Kart now. Although there is a lot of criticism about that. But still, if you look at the profit numbers they made off a game like, I don't know, Pokemon Go, then you can see that they made so much money, it's absolutely mind-boggling. Which would never be possible when making a gaming cell phone. And so we never got any of it, and this also goes for all the other concepts on this list. But hey, now we at least know about them. 